Howdy neighbors, David here, da, 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 da. and today on Boondock Stallions, we're going to be talking about my absolute favorite horror movie of all time. I'm lying, let's start this over again because I messed up. Bloopers! Take two, five, four, oh my god, am I going to, four, four, Reel is going to go off without a hitch today. Howdy, neighbors! David here. And today on Boondock Stallions, I've got a new film theory that's been racking my brain all night, all day, because last night my best friend and I and his girlfriend went to the movies for the 40th anniversary release of Friday the 13th. We had to go see it on the big screen because Unfortunately, 1980 was three years too early for me to have gone and seen it or when it came out, but this was just as good. Actually, before we get started, let's talk about why Friday the 13th is my favorite franchise and give you a little bit of history about me and my family. So, I am the youngest and most awesomest of three children. I'm the only boy, and my two older sisters um, are 8 and 12 years older than me, so there's a bit of a gap in bringing us up and how we were brought up and uh when i was six summer of 1989 my sister rachel asked my dad if he would take us to the movies and let us go see something and my dad being a hard-working single parent was like get y'all out of the house absolutely take my money and so he drives us to the movie theater and leaves us and my sister rachel says okay david we can go inside and see Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. I know you've been wanting to see it. It's funny, it's gonna be good. You'll love it. But if we go upstairs, we can see Friday the 13th Part 8, Jason Takes Manhattan. It'll be terrifying. You'll love it. And obviously, I wanted to go see the scary movies to impress my big sister. And so, I went with her upstairs, we saw Friday the 13th, and I was terrified. I've even had reoccurring nightmares of um, the scene where at the beginning where Jason's body is buried underneath all the rubble in the lake and his hand is sticking up and there's that power surge of electricity and it brings him back to life and all kinds of mayhem ensues. <sighs> Good times. But I've been a diehard fan of the series ever since and so I went back and watched all the movies that came before it. I remember when Jason Goes to Hell came out, that was awesome. And I waited forever, got Jason X, which everybody hates on, but that movie was awesome. I mean, first of all, Jason's been everywhere. He's battled psychics, he died, he died again, he went to hell, he went to New York. I mean, where else was he going to go? Space, the final frontier. And at least they waited until the 10th one to get him there. I mean, uh, I believe Leprechaun did it in four. And that was awful. But to be fair, that was the last Leprechaun series movie before it became its own little branch service of um, Leprechaun and Leprechaun in the Hood. And all I'm saying is, Warwick Davis, if you could be there for Leprechaun and Leprechaun Back to the Hood, you should have been back for Leprechaun Returns. That's all I'm saying. Fight me, bro. Um, anyways... So as I was saying, I've seen all the movies a bajillion times over and over again. I could start with the first one and talk line for line all the way to the remake, except I didn't see the remake that many times because, I mean, I don't even think I need to explain why I didn't see the remake that many times. Anyways, uh, I digress. So, watching Friday the 13th on the big screen last night, I uh, was able to see it maybe with fresh eyes or fresh atmosphere. Whatever it was, the gears in my brain started putting things together in a different way that it had never done before. First of all, I'm pretty sure that the character Brenda and Alice are gay. And I would have loved to have seen that fully fleshed out on, uh, I'm sorry, in the movie. You see, um, Brenda is getting hit on by Ned throughout the entire movie. Ned is, you know, pretending to shoot arrows at her, saying he loves it when she says cute things. He even pulled a move that we all saw in that movie, The Sandlot, where Squint's fake drowning so that he could get Wendy Peppercorn to um, uh, save him and give him mouth to mouth so he could sneak a kiss. That's right. Ned did that in Friday the 13th in 1980. Booyah, Sandlot. Not that I'm trying to take away from The Sandlot. I mean, that movie's legendary. But um, 
she's just not having it, not having it at all. In fact, right before Ned gets murdered, you kind of see him off wandering the woods because you know he's fixing to go into a dark place and rub one out to Kevin Bacon making out with his girlfriend in her uh, bathing suit by the lake. I mean, come on, I've seen it a hundred times. And so, later on, we find Brenda in a game of strip monopoly with a few of her fellow campers. And now, Brenda's stripped down most of her clothes. The other cat, the other guy in the cat, in the, uh, blah, 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 blah. Let's start that over again. <clears throat> so later on, we find Brenda and a few of her other campers um, playing strip Monopoly. Now, Brenda and the guy there have already stripped down most of their clothes, and the main character, Alice, obviously the character of Virtue in a movie, is still fully clothed. And just uh, as she rolls the dice and realizes that she doesn't have the money for the rent, she's about to take off her shirt. There's a gust of wind and rain and lightning burst through the windows, and Brenda says, uh-oh, we're going to have to finish this game another time. I've got to go back to my apartment and, or my cabin and shut the windows. And just when things were getting interesting. Now that's a curious line, just when things are getting interesting, because the very last thing to happen in the game was Alice was about to undo her shirt and take it off. And indeed, things would have been more interesting. So, there's my whole silly little thought on Brenda and Alice could have been gay. Oh, also, 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 uh, Alice was being hit on by Mr. Christie, the guy who uh, bought the camp and was restoring it. He hit on her. She wasn't interested. I mean, he's a fairly decent-looking fellow. I mean, strapping, woodworking, good with his hands. Not interested. You know why? Because she wanted a piece of Brenda. So, all that aside... I also found Jason's father. Now that is the big revelation uh, in my theory, is I found Jason's father, ha ha. Jason's father has been hidden there in plain sight. Now the reason I wanted to talk about Jason's father is because we've only ever heard about his mother. And in none of the other Friday the 13th movies do they ever really touch on the father figure in Jason's life. Who was he? Where was he when Jason uh, drowned? Um, was he already dead? Was he in another town? What's the deal? And then in an early version of the script for um, Jason Goes to Hell, there was going to be talk about how Pamela Voorhees was a member of the occult and she had another son named Elias and Elias was going to be the killer in this movie and then that got changed and Elias became a girl and that was uh, Jason's sister Diane that we actually did see in Jason Goes to Hell. And um, they kept the name Elias to be Jason's father. So we know that Elias Voorhees would have been the name of Jason's father, but that was an alternate version of the script that we never got to see the light of day on. There's no film, no nothing on the cutting room floor, nothing. So it's not canon, and if it's not canon, then it can be changed and reinterpreted. But what if, and I always wondered why Pamela Voorhees, who in the first movie insists that Jason was her only child, never would have mentioned uh, her daughter before, and I always thought from the line, through a Voorhees was he born, through a Voorhees must he be reborn, that uh, Diana was absolutely his sister, and she would be what was able to rebirth him to the world, but where did she come from? She didn't have the Voorhees last name, and then it occurred to me that she might only be his half-sister. Now, imagine... And this is all, like I said, theory, guesswork, and speculation on my part. But let's imagine that Pamela Voorhees and her husband, Mr. Voorhees, uh, were working and living at the camp that summer, and that Mr. Voorhees was having an affair. Mr. Voorhees was cheating on Mrs. Voorhees, and while he was out with his mistress, that was the same day that Jason drowned in the lake, and he, losing a child, would have felt personally responsible because instead of... Uh, being there taking care of his son that needed all the attention he could have gotten, this guy was out having sex with some random local there in Crystal Lake. So he goes through depression, he starts drinking, drugs, leaves his wife, becomes homeless, and just wanders haplessly around, um, wandering and lost. Does that sound familiar? Do you know that character? That's right. I'm talking about Crazy Ralph. Crazy Ralph was in the first two Friday the 13th movies, basically wandering around unkempt, unshaven, 
half drunk and in a stupor, screaming, DOOMED! WE'RE ALL DOOMED! And, I don't know if you guys have ever seen it before, but that is exactly what happens to a man who divorces a crazy woman. Sorry, Dad. Um, kidding, Mom. Uh, I've always... I, Ralph, perfect candidate for Jason's father. Ridden with guilt, starts drinking, drugging, never goes back. We don't know what Crazy Ralph's last name is. He is literally listed in the cast as Crazy Ralph on IMDb for both Friday the 13th 1 and 2. And so that's really my only thoughts on Jason's father. And I mean, it's a nice solid little theory. Uh, it would explain why Jason's sister doesn't have the Voorhees last name. She was born out of wedlock and her father was Jason Voorhees' father. And obviously the mother didn't want everybody to know that her little girl and Jason were siblings because reasons. So let me know what you think down in the comments. Well, that's my theory. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, go ahead and give this video a like. If you haven't already, subscribe, turn on the notification so you can see all my latest and upcoming videos. It's October. I'm going to be doing horror movie videos all month long. Uh, I'm doing a debunking of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre because I'm a Texan and I hate it when people who don't live in Texas, or even worse, people who do live in Texas, think that it happened here and it didn't. It's ridiculous. So. I'm doing a whole video on that. We're going to do horror movies all week long. I'm doing uh, Child's Play on Wednesday, so get ready for that. Um, and don't forget, click on the link and you'll be taken directly to a video explaining the rules on my Halloween night horror movie trivia contest that I'm hosting here live at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. You could win $50, $25, or even $10 if you show up and answer 20 questions that are all going to be horror movie related. Hope to see you there, be excellent to each other, and party on, dudes. Ba, 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 ba.